Hey, good morning, everyone. So today, what we're going to get into is changing an output shaft seal on a uh, older Chevy pickup truck. It's a 1990, I believe. Uh, let me show you what I got. So this is the underside of it. There's the drive shaft, and right there, customers complaining about that leak, right there. So we're going to change that seal. Um, sometimes you got to be careful because the bushing for the yoke here inside the tail shaft housing goes bad, and if you push. I got the drive shaft there. If you push up and down on a drive shaft, you can get play in between the two. This is actually still pretty tight. I don't really get much movement at all. So that tells me the, the um, bushing is actually pretty good. So first thing we have to do is we have to pull the drive shaft out. Now, whenever you pull a drive shaft out, what you should do is mark it somehow. What I'm going to do is mark the U-joint here to the yoke here. So what I do is I take my trusty little paint pen. And what I do is I put a mark in here and on here. This way I know that this cup for that U-joint went in that position on the yoke. Now the reason for that is when you go to put it back together, if you have it switched, if you have this cup on the opposite side, there's a possibility you could wind up with a vibration. You're not supposed to. It's supposed to be balanced and that's really not supposed to have an effect. But I've seen it happen where, you know, you change geometry, not that you change geometry, you, you just put stuff back in a different position and it actually just changes how everything sits. So it's a good idea to do that. So now I'm going to take these strap bolts out right here um, because the design of the drive shaft, it sort of blocks, see that? It sort of blocks the bolts themselves. So I'm going to take those out by hand with a wrench, both sides. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll show you what we got. Now sometimes, when you're taking the bolts out, if you're in a position like this, you may not be able to physically get the bolts out. It won't go because the angulation here of the drive shaft and this opening, you may have to rotate it to get the best angle possible like that, and then the bolts come out. All right, so now both straps are out. Now we're gonna get a pry bar in here and try to pop the drive shaft inward because the drive shaft will go into the tranny a little bit. You can see the witness marks here. So that's what we're going to do next. All right, so with the drive shaft rotated down, I'm just going to take my pry bar and I'm going to go in like this and I'm going to push it forward like that to break it free. See that? Now you got to be careful because those cups. The U-joint cups can actually fall off. So just want to be mindful of that. And if they fall off, they got a bunch of little needle bearings in there and they can wreak havoc on your project. All right, so now here it comes down. And you can see on this universal joint, it actually has a strap holding the caps in place because otherwise what I would do is I'd actually wrap this whole thing with tape to keep yeah. the caps from falling off. Yeah. All right, so now with the drive shaft hanging down, we're gonna pull it out of the transmission. Now, I got a pan down on the floor, and the reason being is you pull that out of there, nine times out of 10, you're gonna get fluid coming out. So we're gonna do that next. Well, look at that, no fluid. So we got fluid dripping out of the drive shaft. Now, anytime you pull the drive shaft out, you wanna check your yoke. And you want to look at it, you want to run your fingers on it and feel, see if it's galled at all, uh, see if it's misshapen, see if it has like an hourglass shape to it. Um, and this one seems pretty good. What I would probably do is before I go back together, I'm going to take a piece of scotch Brite and just polish it up a little bit, just to get rid of a little bit of this crap on the edge. All right. All right, so now one thing you want to do after the dry shift is out, you want to clean this up a little bit. Just wipe it down, take a look, so you can actually see where your seal actually is, and then you want to compare. Now, new replacement seals may look slightly different, especially aftermarket, which I'm sure the one that's in there is aftermarket. So that's going to fit. The new one has, an, has a lip on the edge to stop it from going in too far. The original one does not have that. Now, the other thing you want to check is you take the seal, because I've seen this, Put it on 
and make sure it's a proper fit. Because I have seen it where you get what's supposedly the right seal and it's actually too big. People don't pay attention to it. They put everything together and then they wind up with a 10 times worse leak than they had before. Obviously, if it was too small, the dry shaft wouldn't even go in. You'd know it. So now let's work on getting the seal out. Now in this setup, what I'm doing is I'm taking a chisel because I can get I can get right on the edge there. I'm taking the chisel and I'm smacking it in. I can't film this and do this at the same time, so I'm just showing you what's happening. Um, but anyway, so I'm tapping it in like that. That distorts the seal enough, and I should be able to get it out either with a seal removal tool or something. I don't like seal removal tools. I will tell you that. But let me see. Now that's supposed to move. If anybody, any of you notice that? That's supposed to move around. That's normal. But let me see if I can't get something in there to get that out. Alright, so now you guys can all see it dripping out. That's the reason for the bucket. Now, get the screwdriver in there. And it should... Yeah, see it's moving already. And... There it goes. It's out. And you can see the bushing right inside there in the tail shaft. And I can see it, but I can't film it. I can just see the edges of it. And it looks fine. Everything looks okay in there. I'm not too worried about that. And here's the old seal. That is, an, that is a replacement aftermarket seal. So now we get to install the new one. Alright, so now i got the new seal all prepped. If you saw my helpful tips video, you saw what I uh, packed these things with. And I put a touch of silicone all the way around it. Um, very light amount. Now, on that end, what you want to do is you want to wipe it out, make sure there's no dirt or debris inside. Then the seal is going to go on like such. And I'm going to tap it in place with a seal installer. Alright, so now that's installed. It's flush up against there. Um, you can use a socket. I have a seal installer uh, that's recessed to allow the uh, output shaft to go into it because uh, a flat seal installer obviously won't install that. So now the next step is going to be the dry shaft. Got a piece of scotch right pad. I'm just going to polish that up a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy. I just want to make sure there's no you know, nicks or anything on it. All right, so now with that polished up, we're gonna install that. You can see there's some markings on there from what looks like it might have been rust buildup, but it's smooth. There's no nicks, there's no deformation, no nothing. All right, so now the dry shaft's going up in place. You lay it on the output shaft and then you just insert like so. Let it bottom out, whatever you have to do. So now we come to the back here you want to rotate it and get those marks to line up. <clears throat> so now we're going to get it in like such. I'm going to line everything up and get it good to go. Oh, one thing, if you didn't have that strap, that clip that's here that centers the U-joint cap into the yoke, make sure the opening is facing away from the yoke because that's what helps center it. All right, so now everything's all bolted up, everything's done. The U-bolts are tight, or the, U, the strap bolts are tight, I should say. These only get uh, torqued down to like 18 foot-pounds, 18 to 20, so just be mindful of that. They don't take a hell of a lot of torque. So anyway, that's it, the job is done. It's cleaned up, looking good. I'm gonna let it down, just double check the tranny fluid, make sure that we're good there. But that's about it, so hope you liked that video. Uh, if you get anything out of my videos, hit the like button, and please subscribe. If you want to share my videos, go right ahead. Uh, I guess that's about it. Hope you guys have a great day, and keep watching.